Hey there everybody, it's Russ. And as many of you know, I love shooting video. Clearly that's why I have a YouTube channel. And in this video, I wanted to share with you some tips, some tricks, some gear recommendations I have for filming your next bike adventure. So first off, I feel like there are uh, various methodologies for how one would want to shoot their bike adventure. Um, you know, there's a real kind of produced cinematic piece with drone footage and slow motion footage and kind of deep navel gazing narration. And that's kind of not the kind of videos that I like making or consuming these days. I feel like, okay, they're beautiful, but they're also overdone. And I'm kind of really tired of those videos. So the videos I'm interested in these days, uh, they have slightly less production value, but they're really strong on narrative. They're strong on having a point. And they're also, I hope, giving value to you guys as a viewer. It's not just a series of beautiful B-roll shots and some cheesy music and some cheesy narration. I'm just not into that. So I think one of the best examples that we have on the channel of the videos that I always strive to make is uh, the video that we did for the Ramble Ride and also our video taking Amtrak to Whitefish and riding going to the Sun Road. I felt like it, it captured the sense of travel. It wasn't overly cheesy, but it had some nice shots. And in both of those, there was a sense of narrative of some progress and also some beta for you as a traveler. So it's a mix of entertainment and education with a strong focus on narrative. And I think this kind of style is achievable for lots of people, especially lots of bike YouTubers, because you don't need fancy cinema cameras or a drone necessarily. So I'm gonna start off with a couple of film uh, and video concepts and then kind of explain how I translate that into the bike videos that we make. First off, there is the idea of a roll or the P to camera and this is where uh, like the name suggests I'm talking to the camera I'm explaining something that's happening in the scene around me and I'm doing something that generally moves the narration of the video forward the best kind of camera for that is one that has a fairly wide angle lens especially if you're a single shooter and you're just holding it an arm's length away from you and also has some decent mics so either uh, some inputs for uh, an external mic or a camera they can hold fairly close so it gets good audio. And what's interesting, I think, is the type of camera that I like to use for these uh, pieces to camera has changed over the years. Uh, like many of you, I've, I started out with a larger camera. This is, isn't even very large. So the GH4 with a, um, you know, a Rode shotgun mic on it. I would hold it like this and this would be uh, my camera that would do, that would capture the pieces to camera. And as you can see, it's Fairly small, but still pretty big. And I've actually gravitated from big cameras like this and have gotten way smaller. I experimented for a while using the G5X, which is a kind of cousin to the, the popular G7X that lots of vloggers use. And it's pretty good. It's got okay mics. You have to put wind muffs on them. And I would hold it like this and speak to it and kind of advance the narrative. But one thing I did find is that the lens wasn't very wide enough. So even, you know, at arm's length, there was just too much head and not enough environment. So lately, the camera I've been using to shoot pieces to camera has actually been this. It's just a simple GoPro, in this case, a GoPro Hero 5. And I have several videos on this setup, but essentially, I took the stock case, I used some Sugru and uh, Sugru the external mic adapter and you know run this small little ceremonic mic. So what's nice about this is you essentially get the same thing as this, but in a way smaller, way lighter package. And as you know, if you're on bike, you know, carrying as little weight as you can goes a long way in terms of enjoyment of the actual bike travel part. I can quickly stop, turn it on, you know, describe something around me and then click it back onto the chesty cam and then turn it off. And a lot of our recent videos, especially the, the couch to Candace stuff, I've actually only just carried this one camera and I think it does a pretty good, jo good job. You know, is it the most cinematic camera? Does it have the highest dynamic range? The answer is no. But in terms of mobile video that you're consuming on a small cell phone or tablet or laptop, I think the video quality is, is, is more than adequate. And most importantly, it's got the ability to take an external mic so I can you know, do those narrative pieces to move the videos along. So right now, my current favorite. So what do I use for B-roll? This is all the other footage that I lay on top of uh, the narrative that kind of illustrates and gives a sense of place. The GoPro is obviously limited. It only has one kind of focal length. So if I feel like I need B-roll that has you know, different focal lengths or a little bit more options, then I will bring 
the G5X. It's got a zoom lens, so I can zoom in a little bit closer to things, uh, get shallow depth of field. This even does slow motion up to 60p. So a pretty versatile small camera, and it actually edits pretty well when I cut it with the GoPro footage. Again, you can check out our Ramble Ride video, which was shot entirely on the GoPro and on this little guy. So in terms of the absolute minimum stuff, which in my opinion, I think you would need to create you know, a good narrative video, a GoPro actually goes a long way. I mean, there's a lot I definitely hate about the GoPro. In particular, the uh, overpriced external mic adapter, or you can use an alternative, you know, like the E cameras or something. This actually makes a pretty good bike vlogging camera. And I know when you look at a camera like this, it is way more seductive than a camera like this. But here's the thing. I love, the, I love this camera, the GH4. I've taken it on many adventures, used it for many paid shoots. Uh, but now when I travel personally, it's a lot to carry, especially if you've got a traditional bike packing uh, rig without a rack and what have you. It's also a pain to get into. And if it's inconvenient to get to your camera, you're just not gonna shoot that footage. So in my opinion, you know, something like this, yes, you lose a little in the production value, but you gain a lot in terms of accessibility. It's lightweight and you're just more likely to use it and therefore get the shots that you need to advance the story of your bike video. So if you want to start recording your bike adventures and don't know where to start and you're kind of concerned that you have to buy a larger camera rig like this, you know, it doesn't have to be a Panasonic. It could be the new Canon or the new Sony. If you're just getting started and you want gear that's just good enough, they'll let you capture the narrative content. And I would actually suggest looking at a smaller camera like a GoPro or like the Yi or other cameras like this. So that's it for this video. Let me know if you're interested in more of this kind of behind the scenes production stuff behind the videos that we make. I'm a big camera nerd. I'm always learning new things about how to film and record. And a lot of times I don't feel like there's necessarily a space on the channel to do that. But if you're interested, I can kind of sprinkle that in there. And if you guys are interested in this setup, um, you know, just search our channel for our GoPro audio hack and it'll pop up. And if you guys have any other questions, leave those in the comments below. If you liked the video, found it useful, like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.